you like living on the edge? Do you want to be playing with experimental Tailwind features that may land in a future release? Do you want to be the canary that your dev team sends down the mine? I have good news for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to preview these potentially upcoming features of Tailwind CSS by using the Canary release on NPM. Let's get right into it. Okay, so here we have a very simple Tailwind CSS project. If we look at our package.json file, you can see that we're using the latest stable version of Tailwind CSS, version 2.1.2. Now, if I visit the Tailwind CSS GitHub repo and I scroll down and open the changelog file, you can see that right near the top, we have this unreleased section here. For example, for the just-in-time mode, we have this new color opacity syntax that's available. And let's take a look at it. This feature allows us to apply opacity modifiers directly to color utilities. So instead of, for example, here having a BG opacity 25 to apply 25% opacity to the background red 500, we can directly pass the opacity as a fraction slash 25 for 25%. In my project, if we take the last square here, which has a BG opacity of 25, and I try to remove this and go slash 25, it's not gonna work. And so now we've completely lost our square. As you can see in the config file, we are using the just-in-time mode here, but you get to remember that these features are unreleased. In other words, this feature is not supported in Tailwind CSS version 2.1.2, which at the time of making this video is the latest stable release. If you do want to play with these features, understanding that they're experimental, they may change, they may not even ever be released, you can do so by using the canary release of Tailwind CSS on NPM. So here I'll open my terminal. Let me scroll down a bit so we can see the version of Tailwind. And I will go npm install Tailwind CSS at Canary. And so this is going to install the Canary version, which is 2.2.0 slash canary.9. Okay, so if I restart my server with npm run dev, you can see that our third element is back and our new background opacity modifier works. So I can come up here and remove this one and change this one to slash 50, and that still works. Now, if I remove the 50 here and open the autocomplete suggestions, you can see that the values available are the same that we had with the background opacity. So if I try a value that doesn't exist, like 17, this is not going to work, but I can use an arbitrary value here with the square bracket syntax, and I can go with 0.17 to specify 17% opacity. And that's going to work, and you can see that the opacity has been applied properly. Okay, let's go back to 50. And the cool thing is these opacity modifiers work with any color utility in Tailwind. So if I duplicate this, and for this one, we're going to apply col span 3, so it spans across the whole width. And instead of this, we're going to go with the background gradient, so BG gradient to right. And we're going to go from pink 500 and to indigo 500. And so now we have this nice background gradient, but up to now, it wasn't possible to apply transparency to one of the background gradient values. So for example, there wasn't any way to specify the opacity of the two gradient stop. I couldn't do something like two opacity 50. With the new opacity modifier syntax, I can go slash 50. And now my gradient stop here will have 50% opacity. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at another unreleased feature, the highly requested per side border color utilities. Oh yeah. Once again, you need the just-in-time mode for this to work. And so I'll duplicate my last div one more time. This time we're gonna have a call span of two. I'll get rid of the background gradient and we'll just have BG green 500. Here we go. And let's add some borders to this thing. So I'm not going to go subtle here. I'm going to go border eight and border green 600. So that's applied a green 600 border to every of the four borders. But now check this out. We're going to change the bottom border color with border B and now I can pass a color. So green 800 and I'm going to do the same but lighter for the border top. So border T green 400. And now, as you can see, we've created a sense of depth in that shape by mimicking like if there was a source of light coming here, it would hit the top edge and make it a bit brighter. And then the bottom edge would be in the shade. So it gets darker. 
That example is a bit extreme, but it's to make sure that you can see the borders properly on this video. But by using thinner borders and more subtle color change between the borders, you can achieve really nice uh, depth effects for things like buttons, for example. Okay, since I'm feeling creative today, I'm going to show you one more thing that you can do with the different color borders. So I'll remove the color span 2 here, and the background color is going to be indigo, and I'll remove all of the border classes. And now I'm going to give this shape a position of relative. Inside of this, I'll have another div with a position of absolute, and we'll give it borders with border 8 and border indigo 800. So you can see our shape here. Now I'm going to use a good old CSS border trick to make a triangle shape. So I'm going to give the shape a height of 0 and a width of 0 too. And I'll make the border top, border T, transparent and the border right transparent as well. All right, maybe you see where this is going now. Uh, I'm going to continue with the transform utility and I'm going to give my shape a negative rotation of 45 degrees. Bloop. So I'm going to scroll down here and one more thing I want to do, since our element is absolutely positioned, we're going to position it with minus bottom two. Bloop. And also we'll add left six. And whoop, since we're using the latest version of Prettier here, we jumped into the multi-line class formatting, which I don't mind too much here because it puts all our border utilities on the same line, which for this example is pretty good. I'm going to change the color here to 500 so it matches the shape. And voila, we've built a pretty cool speech bubble with a CSS triangle made with borders. All right, so there you have it. If you do want to play with these potentially upcoming features of Tailwind CSS, you can go ahead and install the Canary release of Tailwind CSS on NPM, but always keep in mind that what you're playing with in there is experimental and may change. All right, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.